Like most of you, I'm not a surgeon. I'm one of the physiatrists, so a lot of what we do at the office here is non-surgical as well. So just talk a little bit about um, different types of injections and how we might go about them. Um, so nothing to disclose. So the main thing, um, the main two modalities that we use are ultrasound and x-ray guidance or using a fluoroscope for image guided injections. This would be opposed to just a blind injection using anatomic landmarks, things like that. Um, I'm going to go into more detail about most of the peripheral type of injections, whether it's joints and tendons, things like that. One thing I just wanted to touch upon are the spine injections, which we do. Um, and talking about epidural injections, things like that. For those, image guidance is required, and it's also a standard of care to use the fluoroscopy, x-ray guidance. Um, so there's really no discussion. You can't use ultrasound guidance. Um, that's considered experimental, and it's just not safe. So um, in this case, you know, there's no blind versus x-ray guidance um, injections in the management for, for pain. Um, briefly talking about x-ray guidance using the fluoroscope, um, obviously x-rays are visualizing bony anatomy, um, so we often are using these um, for joint injections, so that would be an arthrogram, um, able to visualize the needle, the bony structures, and then we're using a, a contrast material, a dye, um, to visualize the flow of the medication to make sure uh, it is truly actually intra-articular. Now obviously the x-rays are not visualizing soft tissue, so these aren't really preferred for many of the soft tissue injections that we might uh, do. The other thing is, again, uh, practitioner and patient safety. Again, these are x-rays, although they're very, very low dose, it's still a consideration, especially if you're doing uh, a number of injections in a day, you're in there all day, so you have to consider the total dose of radiation. Another thing too, if you have pediatric patients or pregnant patients, you really don't want to use the x-ray if you don't have to. So uh, we're using that uh, fluoroscope or the x-ray less and less. And that's really because the emergence of the use of ultrasound for guidance. And really over the past 10 years, you know, this is really expanding uh, quite a bit. It has excellent visualization of the soft tissue, but you can also view the bony anatomy. You can see the joints uh, among uh, uh, blood vessels, nerves, and other structures as well. Other advantages, there's no radiation whatsoever. Um, you can visualize any structure. So if a patient says it hurts here, you can literally just plop the ultrasound right on top of it and just see what's going on it. And if there's something there, you're able to visualize that area. The one thing about the ultrasound is it is very user dependent and there is a little bit of a learning curve. Um, so it's, it takes a little bit more practice um, than, some, than say even an, an x-ray for guidance. But uh, once you get the hang of it, you can quickly um, apply it to a lot of uh, the injections you might be doing. So the main things we just wanna talk about, are the, are, we'll talk about the ultrasound injections for the rest of the discussion here accuracy and, and safety. So those are the two big things that, that we're always thinking about with any intervention, um, you know, specifically these, these injections. The, the setup is pretty straightforward. Whatever body part you're injecting, you just get the patient and yourself in a comfortable position. And if you're doing something, say, around the wrist, the patient's just you know, in that comfortable position. You're gonna have one hand for the holding the ultrasound uh, probe, uh, the transducer lining up the anatomy, visualizing things, and, and having a nice stable base there. And your other hand is going to have the syringe and the needle, so it's kind of like a video game. You, you have two things going on at the same time. So as the younger generation kind of comes up, you know, they're going to be a little bit better than we are even at this. Um, we, I'll go into an example here. We'll talk about an injection around the shoulder. Uh, the long head of the biceps travels up the anterior portion of the shoulder. So the setup here, again, you can see in the right hand is the transducer, and then the left hand, you have the syringe and the needle. Um, and oops, wrong way here. so what you're gonna be looking at on the ultrasound screen, if the transducer looks like that, uh, this is an image of what uh, the ultrasound actually looks like. And to just to kind of show you what each structure is, you can see the superficial to, to things is the deltoid muscle. The orange oval is actually the biceps tendon itself. Um, you can see underneath that the humeral head and the tuberosities. 
Another thing that you can also visualize too is the little red dot. So in, in ultrasound, you're able to visualize the vascular structures as well. So that's what you're looking at. And once you have things lined up, you can say, okay, we're ready for the injection. So what you're actually able to see the needle itself. I purposely chose a somewhat poor uh, image here, but you can see on the left side of the screen, that diagonal structure, that needle is actually coming from left to right here down into the tendon sheath. Now you may lose a little visualization, which can happen, but again, the ultrasound, it's a video. It just constantly, um, the screen is constantly changing and we're seeing dynamically what's going on. So as we push the fluid in, you're gonna see the distension of the tendon sheath with the tendon uh, right in the middle there. So we often end up with this kind of bullseye effect. So you, you're seeing proper flow of things. Now, if there is some kind of anatomic consideration, it's very easy to change approaches. So on the top is the approach we just did a second ago. Well, if there's an issue there or vascular structure, we can change it up. So now this bottom picture, you can see we're now gonna go inferior to superior along the length of the tendon sheath. And again, it's just gonna look slightly different. We're gonna see that tendon coming from right to left, that's inferior to superior, still getting in with the tendon sheath. Those stars are the biceps tendon, so you can very easily see the, the needle guiding right along that biceps tendon sheath there. So it's very easy to call an audible with a patient right in front of you. Accuracy-wise, this can be applied and we can go into you know, every single body part here. Um, just looking at this injection we're talking about now, done studies, is it in the tendon sheath? Is it in the tendon, which you don't want it, or did you miss altogether, okay? So this is looking at that. So in summary, you use ultrasound, at least 86% of the time, it's perfect. If you just do it blind, you're gonna miss or get it in the tendon 73% of the time. So obviously you're much more accurate with, with using the ultrasound. So there's really essentially no reason not to do it in that case. And there's even injections, I mean, many orthopedists are just gonna do an injection to the knee. They say it's so big, how could you miss? Well, there's studies to show that even trained orthopedists um, and, and us may only get into the joint about 80 to 90% of the time just doing it blind. Whereas ultrasound, it's gonna be even higher, close to 100%. But th th that's not the important part of this slide. The important part is that the study actually showed a few other things. Um, there's actually a reduction in procedural pain. So anytime you do an injection, patients are either anxious, they're nervous, they're kind of freaking out, they scream when you, when you stick them. So most patients actually tolerate an ultrasound-guided injection uh, a lot better. They're gonna feel less pain because we're not going in there and accidentally hitting a bone or doing something else. So they usually tolerate it be better. There's also a reduction in pain stores, scores, and they tend to have a better therapeutic benefit. Now granted, I think that may be partly due to the placebo effect, but who cares? It's safe, why not use that to our benefit? But at least you know, from us who do a lot of injections, getting the patient to feel less pain during it they actually think we're a better doctor for it, so that, that's, that's fine, I, I just go along with it. Uh, you know, there, again, we don't need to just do tendons, we can do muscular injections. So in the forearm here, we, we can see the individual muscle bellies, so if we need to target the flexicarpi ulnaris, we can do that. If we wanna do something um, deeper down, like to the, one of the muscle bellies of the FDP, we can use the ultrasound and, and visualize the needle. Right in the middle of the screen here, you can see a nerve. Obviously, we don't want to hit nerves. Ultrasound, we're always able to visualize those, those structures there. The other thing we can do, like I said, ultrasound, the screen is on and we're seeing in real time what's going on with the anatomy. So for certain injections, I may inject one of the muscle bellies of the FDP so I can have the ultrasound probe, the transducer on the forearm, and then I can ask the patient to move individual digits. And then I can see, is my needle in the right location? So I'm going from right to left here. This is the needle going down into one of the muscle bellies here. And this is a patient where I just ask them to flex just the second digit. And you can kind of see the muscle actually contracting there very lightly. So I know that if we're gonna inject a Botox or something like that, we're directly in that individual muscle belly there. So it allows for me to be sure that we're right where we need to be. Um, other injections, we may 
aspirate something, a hematoma, a cyst. So around the wrist, very common to have ganglion cysts. On the ultrasound, again, fluid is dark, hypoechoic. Um, so this is what a cyst may look like. Now, many times uh, one of the hand surgeons may just go in and be able to aspirate that. But again, we need to think about what other structures are around this. So this is that same cyst. On the left-hand side of the screen, um, I noticed something that didn't quite look right. I turned on the Doppler and I can see the neurovascular bundle right there, which I actually wasn't expecting because it was actually a dorsal, um, dorsal cyst. So I actually was able to adjust my approach and avoid those structures. Again, we're just doing this on the fly, it makes things much safer for the patient. The other kind of satisfying thing, and I showed this to patients, they love it. This is the same cyst. Right here in the middle of the hypocoke structure is the needle. And you're gonna see, as I aspirate the fluid, it just disappears. So now we're like, it's gone. So number one, I can tell the patient 100% of the fluid's out. You can show it to them, and they're like, oh, that's wonderful. And again, we're, we're all about safety, but patient satisfaction is very important, I guess. So, um, so it's, just, it's just helpful for me, and the patients can visualize that, and they appreciate that. Again, same thing. If you're just doing a, flu, uh, a joint injection, you can see the joint actually start to distend. So we're visualizing it. It's safe. We're seeing it. We're making sure everything's going right where it needs to go. So do they improve accuracy and safety? <laughs> they totally do. So ultrasound injections, more accurate, they're safer, there's no radiation, improved uh, satisfaction scores, reduced uh, procedural pain, and approved outcomes. Um, there's been more and more books kind of teaching everybody how to do this. This is actually one that I helped co-author back in residency, um, and that's a quick outline.